In the evening, I went very unwillingly to a society in Aldersgate Street, where one was reading Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans. About a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change with God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation, and an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Blessed good morning to all of you, God's people who are gathering in different areas and parts of our uh, dwelling. We welcome you on this Sunday morning as we come together in a very special service, a service to celebrate the conversion and salvation experience of the father of Methodism, Father Reverend John Wesley, on the 24th of May, 1738. This is an international celebration event of all people called Methodists around the globe. And therefore, be conscious that as you sit in your home today and are listening to this broadcast, you are actually joining millions and millions of people called Methodists around the world to celebrate this very important day. But what is more important, it is that as we celebrate and commemorate the conversion experience and salvation of Father Wesley, it is an opportunity for us to go through a deep introspection process where we check our own salvation story and journey with Christ our Redeemer. Come, let us now pray. Christ our Redeemer, God our Creator, Holy Spirit our Empowerer and Sustainer, you are the source of life, you are the giver of all blessings, you rule from the apex of the heavens to the bottom end of the oceans, Everything in between belongs to you and it is under your power and authority. Our very lives, O oh God, are coming from you and we move and are shaken by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that this morning we can gather together even in our separate spaces, yet in spirit and in thought, in faith and in prayer, we are united for your spirit, no, no distance, no, no separation. Your spirit hovers over everything that you have created. And at this time, Lord, as we start this service, we say, come, Holy Holy Spirit, fill the space, fill the cyberspace, fill the internet space, fill every space, God, that is, and fill it with your anointing, with your power, with your holiness, with your sacredness. May you bless us, Lord, as we seek to engage in the worship in truth and in spirit. For you said, Jesus Christ, true worshipers are those who worship God are in truth and in spirit and are not necessarily located and restricted to a particular place or location. And therefore, Lord, we invite and invoke the power of the living spirit through this broadcast. And may you bless and move every heart that at the end of this service, after listening to your word, our hearts may be moved and be strangely warmed and be connected with you in Jesus' holy name. We bless your holy name. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are keeping safe and well. Today's Bible reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26 and 27. It is from the NLT version. And I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Thank you. Isafundo setu sifumana ukumwa Ndoni nika inglizio encha, dini nike umoya omu changa paka tikuini. Ndi isu se inglizio eli nike inyame ni yenu, dini nike inglizio e inyame. Eli nilizio lika tiku, makubulu liku tiku. Amen. Bawa wetu ose suri ni ma.
Thank you to Shalin and to Zimasa for the reading of the words. My friends, this morning I want to talk to you on the subject matter a new heart for a new world a new heart for a new world this is based on the reading of ezekiel chapter 36 that we have done and i am focusing on this 26 which reads as follows and i will give you a new heart and will put a new spirit in you i will take out your stony stubborn heart and give you a tender responsive heart this is the word of god a new heart for a new world. Today is a significant day in more ways than one. Firstly, it is the seventh Easter Sunday. The second thing, it is that it is a period or a Sunday that lies between the Ascension Day and the Pentecost day or Sunday. And therefore, this is a period that I would prefer to call the apostolic incubation period. It is the time when the Church of Christ was locked up in an upper room and to pray and to connect with each other in heart and in spirit. And then on the third uh, occasion, this day marks what we call the Wesley Day or the Elders Gate ex uh, Sunday. It is on this last historic event that I want to focus our attention whilst holding and tantalizing your spiritual taste buds about the expectations of the coming Sunday of Pentecost. It is on this day, on the 24th of May in 1738, that Father Wesley attended a meeting at Aldersgate and later he wrote these words in his journal in the evening i went very unwillingly to a society in aldersgate street where one was reading luther's pre preface to the epistle to the romans about a quarter to nine while he was describing the change which god works in the heart through faith in christ I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. Close quote. John Wesley got a strangely warmed heart and we are told after that experience his ministry and work and preaching was never the same again because indeed when you when you get an experience of the the heartwarming experience of the grace of God, you can never remain the same. No matter who you are and what you are, once the grace of God touches your heart in a moving way, you can never remain the same. So as we com commemorate the heart-changing experience of John Wesley, 
I also want to talk to you on the subject of a new heart and for a new world. In the light of Father Wesley's heart experience testimony, I want us to take a spiritual checkup, a heart of a church and the heart of the world needs to be checked. And I want us to look at the scripture that we have read and take a spiritual dipstick and check the condition of the heart of the church and the heart of the society. Because indeed for us to get a new world, we have got to get a new heart. Ezekiel is a priest and a prophet who exercised his ministry in exile of Babylon. He and all of the people of Judah were locked down in captivity in Babylon. Whether you realize it or not, whether you agree with it or not, but I want to say to you, the Church of Christ is in captivity and locked down by the Corona virus. And in the captivity of Babylon, God appointed and called Ezekiel to be the pastor and the prophet of a nation in captivity. So effectively, God used one of the captives in Babylon to speak to the people of Israel, to pastor to them and give them a prophetic hope and direction. God used one of them who was with them in captivity. Just like today, God is still using pastors and prophets to and preachers to speak and give hope to the church in captivity, to the church under lockdown, to the church that is under the siege of a coronavirus, to give hope and direction for life. We are in this together. In chapter 36 of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, it is in the middle of their captivity. And where we read, in the section we read is in the middle of a section of the book that is called The Oracles of Hope and Good News by Ezekiel, the prophet of God in exile. And those chapters move up, are ranging from chapter 33 to chapter 48 of the book of Ezekiel. But chapter 36 in particular speaks about the restoration of the economy of Israel and the hope for the renewal of the land. So in chapter 36, we meet a God who gives a hope of the resurrection or the resuscitation of the economy of Israel and the renewal of the land. So it was about the land and economy. Now, I want you to understand and see where I am going with this. In chapter 36, God had an intention and a plan to resuscitate and revive the economy and renew the land. So it was about the economy and the land. And yet God starts that process by going into the inward process of the renewal of the heart. But also God gives Israel the vision of life after captivity. He gives Israel a promise of what is going to happen in future when they return back to the land of Israel. 
It is surprising that when God wants to wants to fix the economy and the land, he starts with an internal process. God's restoration and renewal approach surprises because primarily his economic recovery plan assumes a spiritual cleansing process. His land expropriation without compensation process starts with the spiritual heart transplant process first. In verse 26, God says to Israel, I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you and I will take your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. The intention and plan is to restore and to renew the outward reality of the economy and the national life of Israel. Yet God starts in the inward world of the heart and the spirit. And you wonder, why does God take that approach? Well, God takes that approach because to fix the external physical reality, you have to fix the internal world of the heart, soul, and mind. To put it differently, to the, the state of the external reality is a direct reflection of the internal reality of the heart and the spirit of a human being. So if you want to change, you really want to change your external environment, your outer world, you've got to go into the inner world and shift the things there because the inner world, it is just a mirror or rather the physical world, the inner and the the environmental world that you are experiencing, it is just the mirror of what is going on in the heart, in the mind, and in the soul. And therefore, God's approach is to start with the heart. Let us look at the heart transplant process of God. God speaks of a new heart and says, I will give you a new heart and I will pour in a new spirit. He speaks of a new heart, not a reconditioned heart or an improved heart or a reworked heart, but he speaks about a new heart, a completely different heart from the kind of heart that Israel had. And I want now to focus on this question, what, what is the heart? The heart denotes the, the seedbed of feelings. The heart, it is the seedbed of feelings. It is the seedbed of emotions. It is where your meditative thoughts are found. A heart is a sitting place of one's desires. And therefore, if you want to change one's heart, one's emotions, one's meditative thoughts, and one's desires, you've got to change the heart space. It is not about the physical organ, the physiological organ that you find behind your chest. It is about the spiritual network of your feelings, emotions, your thoughts, and your desires. But also God speaks about a new spirit. Now, when he talks about the spirit, he talks about the quality of your attitude, the quality of your character. He speaks about the level of faith 
it denotes also the focus point of your passion, your interest, where the fire within your bosom sits. And therefore, that is the spirit that you hold. And therefore, God says, I will give you a new heart and I will give you and pour out a new spirit. So God is saying, I am in a process of changing the outside world of the economy and renew the land. But unless the heart and the soul, the mind and the spirit of a human being is changed, it will not be changed. What that then God expects from us? What then happens? It is that your thoughts, your speech, and your action will then reflect your heart and your spirit. So you move to a new place. You're thinking of you want a new environment. But if your heart, your heart is still the same and your spirit is still the same, you can move to a new place. You can move to a new environment. If your heart is still the same, the old reality will show up in your new environment. Therefore, nothing in your life will ever change unless you have a new spiritual heart. You have gone through a spiritual transformation and a heart transplant. You need a new heart for a new world. I know of people who moved from church to church, who moved from an employer to employer, who moved from company to company, from one relationship to the next relationship, from one marriage to the next marriage, from one country to the next country, from one continent to another continent. And they move like that in the hope of changing the environment and changing their lives. And the problem it is that as they go from place to place, one person to the other, one relationship to the next, they carry the same attitude, they carry the same mind, they carry the same emotions, they carry the same heart and spirit. And when they get into the new environment, the old comes again because you cannot run away from your true self. Because your heart and your spirit is your true self. So if you want to change anything in your life, if you want to change the circumstances of your life, if you want to change the quality of your marriage, if you want to change the quality of your church, if you want to change the quality of your company, if you want to change the quality of your spiritual, you've got to change the heart. And once the heart is changed, then you will have a new life. And then God says in verse 26, And I will take away your stony, stubborn heart. God, God says, I will take your stony, stubborn heart and replace it with a tender, responsive heart. What I want you to realize from the beginning, it is that the heart transformation process is never a human effort process, but it is a God's process. It is a God work. It is a divine work. You cannot do it through a human effort. It is the work of grace. It is the work of the blood. It is the work of mercy. It is the work of love. It is the work that only God and only God can do. We can have a manifesto after manifesto. We can have a conference after conference. We can have economic plan after economic plan, legislation after legislation, commission of inquiry after commission.
condition of inquiry. If the heart and the spirit are not transformed by God and replaced with a tender, responsive, and Holy Spirit blazing heart, then we will always have the old world in the new world because the heart and the spirit are not changed. Unless we change the heart and the spirit, the demons of the past will rise up in the current. Corruption of the apartheid years will rock up in the new democratic dispensation. South Africa, my friends, does not have an economic problem. South Africa has got a heart problem. Our society does not have a gender-based violence crisis, but we have a heart problem. South Africa and Africa does not have the, the hunger and the poverty problem, but Africa and South Africa just have got a crisis of cold, stone, stubborn, evil hearts. It is a heart problem. It is not an economic problem. It is not a political problem. It is not a social crisis. It is the heart crisis. It is only, it is only God, my friends. It is only God who can be able to transform South Africa, Africa and the world through the great work of heart transformation. It is only God who is the great heart surgeon who is able to change the hearts of the people. It is only God who is the heart surgeon who can help us and take away this corruption, greed, evil, sin, sick heart of our nation and our social life. It is only God, my friends, because it is God who is able to enter into the dark spaces of the heart. Until that happens, we only, we will only dream of a new, prosperous and safe South Africa. So we need a new heart for a new family life, for new church fellowship, for new businesses, for new companies, for new communities, for new racial relations, for new economic revival, for new gender relations, for new social relations. And all that starts with each one of us doing a deep introspection of this and, and, and subjecting ourselves to the process of mercy, grace, and salvation. We will have a new heart only when we give to God our old heart so that then God can transform our old heart into a new tender, responsive heart that is blazing with love, with mercy, with generosity, with humility. May God bless us with a new heart so that we may be blessed with a new world. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. We are now going to ask Janeline George to pray for us. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for life and for our many blessings. We believe in your goodness with all our hearts. Today we come before you, Lord, being our guide should any situation make us wonder which way to turn. As each hour passes on this day, Lord, bless us with your strength and joy. Father, it is your desire for us to prosper in all that we do. We speak forth promotions, business ideas, divine connections and partnerships. 
we stir up the same creative spirit that made the heavens and the earth to bring forth new ideas and intervention for the betterment of this world. Through us, God speak word of peace, love, justice and faithfulness that challenge violence, hatred and self-interest in the world. We pray that we find courage and strength in the risen Christ to be faithful witnesses in the face of all challenges. We declare success in the economic restoration and growth in South Africa. Let our country be of great service to all, flourishing through decency, honesty and respect for our people. Lord, may our country be strong and courageous, making wise decisions guided by the Holy Spirit and not terrified or discouraged. Give the government wisdom and calm so that they can rightly assess every situation and bring peace and productivity. Thank you, Lord, for as we seek you each day that you will guide us along the best pathway for our lives. In Jesus' holy name, amen. generosity through offering and tithing we thank you for your responsiveness whenever we make a call and secondly I, I, I want to thank all of you for engaging in a week of prayer it has been a blessed week where we were going through a week of prayer um, break every chain prayer campaign. We thank you and we want to thank everyone in EMC and all over the country and the world who have joined us midday and midnight. Let us finish what we started today at 12 o'clock. We pray and then at midnight we close the seven days and may God bless us as we do so. Now come, let us, let us pray and thank God for the offering and the tithes that you have just made. Generous God, we thank you for the offering and the tithes of your people. We thank you for the flowing hearts of your people that are moved by your Holy Spirit to give even under very difficult economic circumstances of our time. 
Lord, we pray for the revival and restoration of our economy. We pray, O oh God, that may you look at our world and give us mercy. May you bless businesses. May you bless entrepreneurs. May you bless workers and all, all people who have got the power to make economic decisions. May they make those economic decisions with reason and compassion. In Jesus' holy name, Amen. And we round off this service now by joining in a words of benediction. Uh, let, us, let us bless each other. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.